in the last module, we talked about the trajectory, which is a quantitative way to describe the motion of an object. We can describe it quantitatively, often by using models. In this type, we used a particle model. And also, once we establish a coordinate system with an origin, zero of the axes, as well as zero of time. So I've reproduced here our uh, motion uh, diagram for the model of our water balloon thrown from a second story building. We have its location at five points in time uh, along that trajectory and we've we, we've seen it here in terms of vectors as well as the vectors written out in component form. In this module we want to take a look at the displacement. Now the displacement is simply the difference between two points in a trajectory. So, if I want the displacement between these two points, I want the difference. And I will often call a displacement or a difference as delta r vector. The displacement is also a vector, and I use this uh, delta here to represent um, the notation as a difference between two vectors. So if I have delta r, and I'll give it a subscript 1, 0, is then the vector r1 minus the vector r0. Now if I want to look at that graphically, I can see, I can rewrite that as r1 is equal to the vector r0 plus the displacement vector between them. Zero. So if I were to, that means if I add the displacement vector to r0, then I would get r1. So by looking at that graphically, what that represents is this vector right here. This is delta r10. Because if I add it on the tail, tip to tail method, the tail of the displacement vector to r0, my sum graphically gives me r1. Now if I want to uh, look at that mathematically, this is now delta r10 is equal to r1 minus r0, and so then I can do this subtraction in component form, and so I'll take uh, r1, which is equal to 5 i hat plus 15 j hat, and I can take a minus r0, which is a 0 i hat minus 10 j hat, and add those together, and the difference, delta r10, then, is equal to a 5 i hat plus 5 j hat. So then if I want to do this again for the the second one I can continue this along then I would say delta r21 is the difference between r2 minus r1. Graphically that represents this vector delta r21 and if I want to look at that in component form, I can subtract r2, which is 10 i hat plus 16 j hat, uh, plus a minus r1, which is 5 i hat plus 15 j hat, and then minus, because I'm adding a negative vector r1, and then the sum of those is 5 i hat plus 1 j hat. The one thing I've done here is since, since everything is in meters, I've started to drop the, uh, the unit from my, from my numbers here, so I don't have to keep writing m uh, over and over again. I know that, uh, that, that these are meters. Let's clear some some space here. So now that I, we have an idea of, of how this works, 
I can say my first one, delta r10, is equal to 5 i hat plus 5 j hat. I'll just keep it in component form here. And delta r21, the difference between them, is going to be 5 i hat plus 1 j hat. And now if I look at delta r32, that's the difference between uh, the r3 and r2, so that that's pointing in this direction, r32. And that's going to be by subtracting these two vectors. And since we've already have a procedure, we can we can look at them, and we can see that the difference between these two is 5 i hat and minus 3 j hat. And if we complete this and do the the final vector here, this is delta r for 3, is the difference between these two vectors, delta r for 3, is equal to uh, 5 i hat minus 7 j hat. And so here we can calculate each displacement vector as simply the difference between two vectors. And so now we can see it's the displacement of the particle as a function of time. And we can see that the displacement in the uh, uh, x direction is constant while the y direction changes. Now one important thing about the displacement is the displacement is independent independent of uh, of coordinate system. Before, when we did the trajectory, it was important to have a coordinate system, and then the trajectory was the values of the trajectory dependent on our coordinate system, where our zero was, etc. But for a displacement is independent of the coordinate system itself. And so let's take a look at that. What happens to this system if we change our coordinate system? So before, we had this here was the ground, and before we had our zero of our coordinate system there. But in this case, let's keep, let's have our zero of coordinate system at the location where the ball was thrown. So here's five, here's negative five, and then the ground would be at negative ten meters. And so then this would be the same. So in this case, what does it what does it look like? Well, the ball started out here, and then at uh, at five meters, at five meters, it was uh, five meters above where it started. Then it was six meters above. It came down to to three, and then it uh, was four meters below where it started, because it started at ten. Now, if I were to uh, write the vectors for this, so r zero is equal to uh, zero and five. Oh, sorry, r0 starts at 0, so it's just the 0 vector. r1 now is 5 i hat plus 5 j hat here. r2 is equal to 10 i hat plus 6 j hat here. Now r3 is equal to 15 i hat plus 3 
J hat. And then R4 is equal to 20 I hat minus 4 J hat. And again, everything here is in meters. So I don't have to keep writing that. So, so now, he, this is the motion diagram, and from this we can calculate our trajectory. As you can see, these are very different from the, the motion diagram uh, and the trajectory that we had before. However, let's go ahead and calculate the displacement. So R10 is the difference between R1 and R0, and that's, since R0 is just the zero vector, that's 5 I hat plus 5 J hat. That's right here. And if we calculate then the displacement between 2 and 1, we can see here's the, the first one was here. So then the displacement R2, 1, is going to be here, the difference between r sub 2 and r sub 1, and that's 5 i hat plus 1 j hat. Delta r 3, 2 is here, equal to 5 i hat minus 3 j hat. And then delta r four three graphically delta r four three, which is the difference of these two, is then five i hat, and the difference is minus four minus three, which is minus seven j hat. These are now the displacement vectors for this trajectory in this coordinate system. And if we look at what we had before, we can see that the results are identical. So when we want to model a system, after we get our good picture and we can visualize what's going on, we make a model of that system as simple as we can. And in this case, we use in particular the particle model. Next is we have to devise a coordinate system with our zeros of position and time. And from that we can create a motion diagram and determine the trajectory. Though that motion diagram and trajectory depend on the coordinate system and, and you get to choose where that coordinate system is. There's nothing wrong with choosing the coordinate system here on the ground, the zero, or the zero of the coordinate system uh, where the original particle was launched. Both of those are correct, but they lead to different expressions for the trajectory. The key point here in dealing with the displacement, though, is that the displacements themselves are independent of where the origin of the coordinate system is. It's independent of coordinate system. And that is the end of this module.